Today we're going to look at a trick for integrating functions that exhibit a certain sort of symmetry on an interval. And then, well, after we prove the main result, we're going to look at a couple of examples. Okay, so let's see what the theorem says. So we'll suppose that f is continuous on a closed interval a, b, and that this object here, f of x plus f of a plus b minus x is constant on that interval. Then the integral from a to b of f of x dx is in fact equal to b minus a times f evaluated at the midpoint, so that's a plus b over 2, but it's also equal to b minus a over 2 times f of a plus f of b. So you can take either of those two, you know, versions depending on exactly what you want to get out of this. Okay, so let's see how this goes. It's a fairly straightforward calculation. So let's start here with our integral. So we've got integral from a to b of f of x dx, and I'm gonna write this as one half of the integral, so I'm not changing anything here, plus a half times another copy of the integral. But for the other copy of the integral, I'm gonna do a couple of things. I'm going to change my dummy variable from x to t, so I've got f of t dt, and then I'm going to switch the bounds of integration from a to b to b to a. And then I'm going to change this plus to a minus just to take advantage or to fix that you know, order of integration change that I've done there. Okay, and then in this second integral, I'm going to make a certain substitution. So let's outline that substitution right here. So I'm going to say t is equal to a plus b minus x. Let's observe that that means that dt is equal to minus dx. And then that also means that x is equal to a plus b minus t, just inverting our substitution formula. Next up, let's observe that when t is equal to b, that means that x is equal to a. I think that's pretty clear because we have a plus b minus b. And then when t is equal to a, that means that x is equal to b. Also pretty clear. Okay, so let's box that off there. And then, well, like I said, we're gonna use that for our second integral. Well, that means that I need to bring this first integral down unchanged. So I'll do that. So I've got half and then the integral from a to b of f of x dx. Okay. So let's see what we'll do here. Well, let's maybe first note the change of the order of integration. So it's gonna be changed back to the original order. So I've got a half integral from a to b. And then of course, because I've got t equal a plus b minus x, I'll have f of a plus b minus x. And then next up, dt is minus dx. So let's use that to change this minus back to a plus. So I'll have a plus and then a dx there. Okay, but now observe that we're integrating over the same interval so we can push these two together. And we'll have this as one half and then the integral from a to b of f of x plus f of a plus b minus x dx. But now, well, let's observe what our assumption was, and our assumption, or one of our assumptions, was that this um, expression right here, f of x plus f of a plus b minus x is constant. Well, if this is constant, that means that we can plug any number we want to between a and b, and we'll get the same thing. So this is gonna be equal to f of x naught plus f of a plus b minus x naught for any fixed x naught inside of our closed interval from a to b. And then uh, the important thing here is that this is any fixed x naught because that makes this thing a constant, but since this thing is a constant, we can factor it out of the integral. But then if we factor it out of the integral, we've got just the integral from a to b of dx. That just gives us the top endpoint minus the bottom endpoint. In other words, we'll have b minus a all over two, 
and then this is multiplied by our f of x naught plus f of a plus b minus x naught. Okay, great. But next up, what we'll do is set x naught equal to a couple of different things and see what happens. Well, notice that if we set x naught equal to a, we get b minus a over 2 times f of a plus f of, well, a plus b minus a, in other words, f of b. So like I said, that's if we set x naught equal to a. But then if we set x naught equal to the midpoint, a plus b over 2, then we have f of a plus b over 2 plus another f of a plus b over 2. Those will combine together to give us 2f evaluated in the bin point. That'll cancel this 2 in the denominator, leaving us with b minus a times f of a plus b all over 2. But check it out. Those are exactly these two versions of well, the evaluated integral. Okay, so now that we've got this nice formula over here, let's apply it a few times. For our first application, we'll look at the integral from negative one to one of the arctan of e to the x dx. So, well, let's just check that this expression right here is in fact constant on our interval from one to minus one. So that means we need to look at the arctan of e to the x plus the arctan of 1 plus minus 1 minus e to the x. Just, you know, making sure that we do this exactly. And then, well, let's maybe point out right here that we're checking our hypothesis at the moment. But of course, that's going to simplify a little bit. That'll be the arctan of e to the x plus the arctan of minus e to the x. But then the inverse tangent function is in fact an odd function. So that means we can take this minus sign here and factor it out. But then after that, those clearly cancel down to the number zero, which is, well, that's clearly some sort of constant. Okay, nice. So that means our hypothesis is satisfied. And well, we can apply either of these two versions right here. Let's maybe apply the first. So this will give us b minus a, 1 minus negative 1, times our function arctan of e evaluated at the midpoint. So that'll be a plus b over 2, but that's clearly equal to 0. So there we get what? 2 times the arctan of 1. But the inverse tangent of 1 is pi over 4. That's because the tangent of pi over 4 is 1. So that gives us 2 times pi over 4. In other words, we have pi over 2. OK, let's look at another example. So for our next example, we'll look at the integral from 0 to 4 of 1 over 9 plus 3 to the x. So I think maybe without this trick, this would be, I think, a doable integral, would, but it would be a little bit tricky. OK, so let's first, like we did before, check that the hypothesis is satisfied. That means we need to look at 1 over 9 plus 3 to the x plus 1 over 9 plus 3. And then let's see, we'll have b minus a or b plus a minus x. So 4 plus 0 minus x. In other words, we'll have 4 minus x. Okay, so let's maybe simplify this a little bit. This will be 1 over 9 plus 3x. That doesn't change. Plus... Maybe we'll do this all in one line using the fact that this 3 to the 4 minus x is in fact 81 times 3 to the minus x. So let's factor out a 9 times 3 to the minus x from that denominator. So what will that leave us with? So that's going to leave us with a 3 to the x for this 9 term because well, we're factoring the nine out and then we're factoring a three to the minus x out. So that means we end up with a three to the x. And then we'll have a plus nine here for the second term. Okay, good. And well, what are we gonna do next? Well, let's take this three to the minus x and we'll move it to the numerator as three to the x. 
So there we've got that three to the X. And then, well, we need to get this a common denominator. Our common denominator, well, it's almost three to the X plus nine. We've got this extra copy of nine here. So let's multiply by one over nine. But in order to do that, we need to multiply by a nine in the numerator. Okay, then next up, let's factor a one over nine out and notice that we have nine plus three to the X over nine plus three to the X when all is said and done. But that obviously simplifies down to the number one and we're less, left with one over nine, another constant. Okay, so that's good. That means our hypothesis is satisfied. And since our hypothesis is satisfied, well, we can use the conclusion to our theorem. Okay, so let's do that. Let's maybe use this second version this time. So we'll have b minus a over two, that's four minus zero over two, in other words, two times f of a plus f of b. So that's gonna be one over, uh, let's see, nine plus one, because that's one over nine plus three to the zero. And then we'll have plus one over uh, nine plus, well, three to the four, which is 81. Okay, good. Okay, so now let's start to put things together. We'll have a two, and then we have a one over 10 here plus a one over 90. So we need to give ourselves a common denominator. The common denominator is gonna kind of clearly be 90. So we can turn this into a 90. If we put a nine up here, that's gonna give us two. We have nine plus one, which is 10 over 90. Oh, but that cancels down to one over nine. Multiplying by two, we have two over nine. And there we have it. We've got uh, our final solution for this integral. So I think maybe a fun game to play with this theorem is to come up with your own example of an integral that can be easily solved using this theorem, but is practically impossible without. Maybe if you play around and find one, post it in the comments. And that's a good place to stop.